So we spent the last several videos exploring the ISLM model in pretty great detail. We've shown that if we hold interest rates constant, changes in government spending can have a really big impact on total income. And then we saw that holding income constant, changes in the money supply could have a really big impact on interest rates. And we could take that IS curve and that LM curve, and we could allow interest rates and income to change simultaneously, and they give us the total ISLM model. But so far for the ISLM model, we've assumed that prices are fixed. Now, to go from ISLM back to the aggregate demand curve, all we have to do is allow prices to begin to vary. And so that's really all that we're going to do in this video. So we've primarily, again, we've primarily assumed that the price level is fixed, that it's not going to change in the short run and the long run. But if we want to see how changes in the money supply and changes in government spending can have effects on both the short term and the long term, we need to allow the price level to shift. And so recall that the price level primarily presents itself in the LM equation. But the LM equation is an equation with real money balances. So as prices go up, the purchasing power of money goes down. And so we can allow the price level to change within the LM equation to get our aggregate demand curve, just like we had in chapter 10. And so we can derive the aggregate demand curve by allowing the price level to change, similar to the way we've derived ISLM. So if we start just like this, if we allow the price level to change, let's say the price level increases. The price level increasing is going to reduce real money balances. Basically, it's going to present itself in the same way that a monetary contraction did. Basically, it's the same thing as the money supply falling. And so the LM curve, in this case, is going to shift upwards to LM2. And so when it does that, it's going to reduce income. Basically, people's money doesn't go as far, so they're not able to purchase quite as much. And because they don't purchase as much, it increases the real interest rate from R1 to R2. So we can show this relationship and derive the aggregate demand curve. So let's say we start right here at price level P1 and output level Y1, just like we had right here. So at price level P1 and output level Y1, we're right there. But then we allow the price level to increase from P1 to P2. And we know that in the ISLM model, when we increase the price level, that decreased income from Y1 to Y2. And so just connecting these two dots gives us our total aggregate demand curve. Basically, it shows us the relationship between the price level and income so that we have this negative relationship between the price level and total income in an economy. And so the higher price level shifts the LM curve upward. And when it does that, it reduces income. So we shift from Y1 to Y2. And we can summarize this relationship right here with our total aggregate demand curve, which shows the relationship between the total price level in an economy and total output in an economy. Aggregate demand is going to summarize the relationship between P and Y. And 
so we can see how these different policies, monetary policy and fiscal policy, are going to impact the aggregate demand curve through changes in the ISLM model. And so we can start by looking at how a change in monetary policy can shift the aggregate demand curve. So we know, just like the last several videos, that if the Fed were to increase the money supply, It's going to shift the LM curve downward and to the right. Basically, it's going to allow people to spend more money and reduce interest rates. So we're going to shift from LM of M1 to LM of M2. And you'll notice here that the price level has not changed. The only thing that has changed is the interest rate which is declined from R1 to R2, and income, which is increased from Y1 to Y2. Because we didn't allow the price level to change, because the only thing that changed in this scenario is the money supply, it's going to shift the entire aggregate demand curve. Basically, we're going to have a higher level of income for each price level. And so if we initially had price level P and output level Y1. We started with this aggregate demand curve. And when the Fed increased the money supply and didn't do anything else, they didn't change the price level or anything like that, that shifted the entire aggregate demand curve outward from AD1 AD2. Basically, we now at a higher level of output for each price level, which presents itself as a rightward shift in aggregate demand. And so as the Fed increases the money supply, it shifts that LM curve to the right, like we just saw. When the LM curve shifts to the right, that reduces the interest rate and allows people to invest more. It reduces the cost of investment. And so they shift along the IS curve. And when this happens, we come to this new equilibrium level of output, and it increases total output Y for each level of P. And so at each price level, people are now willing to spend more. Similarly, we can see how changes in fiscal policy shift the aggregate demand curve. This would be like an increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes. So beginning with our downward sloping IS curve, an upward sloping LM curve, and beginning at points Y1 and R1, just like in the last few videos, an increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes is going to shift the IS curve to the right. And so we're going to go from IS1 to IS2. And this is going to have that same traditional effect where we increase output from Y1 to Y2, and we increase the interest rate from R1 to R2. Basically, the government is occupying more of that loanable funds market. They decrease national savings, but they're also spending more. So that increases income while also increasing the interest rate. Now, you'll notice that we haven't changed the price level in any of this. All we've done is increase government spending or decrease taxes. We've just engaged in fiscal policy. And so we can, that's going to present itself is a shift in the aggregate demand curve. And so if we were initially at this price level P1, at income level Y1, we started at this aggregate demand curve. 
81 with that same income level Y1. And when we engaged in this fiscal policy, we shifted the entire aggregate demand curve to the right so that at each price level, we now had higher income. Basically, the government was willing to spend more or they reduced taxes, so private individuals were willing to spend more. And this presented itself as a rightward shift in the aggregate demand curve, which increased income. And so just to keep that all straight and simple, when the government engages in expansionary fiscal policy by either increasing government spending or decreasing taxes, in the example of a cut in taxes, that's gonna increase total consumption spending. More consumer spending shifts that IS curve to the right. People now have more disposable income to spend and they're gonna spend it. And that's gonna increase total spending for each level of prices. Similarly, if the government raises government spending, that's going to increase total spending in the economy. And that's going to have that stimulative effect that we've seen throughout the last couple of chapters, which increases Y, which leads to that increase in consumption. All of this taken together is going to shift the IS curve to the right, and we're going to have a higher level of income for each price level. That aggregate demand curve is going to shift to the right. 